It's sharp three, sir. So with all your due permission, we are beginning with the session for today. Yeah. A very good afternoon and a very warm welcome to everyone present here with us. Uh, this is Batul from IJCP and I would like to welcome all the viewers who have joined our platform for the better exchange of knowledge that is going to be shared by none other than our very renowned keynote speaker, Doctor, who is present here with us today. He is none other than Dr. M. Bala Subramanian, sir. Sir is MD, DV graduated and post-graduated from Madras Medical College former state secretary president and national vice president of IMA. Sir is also the founder, secretary and past chairman of professional protection scheme of IMA Tamil Nadu. With sir's wonderful and enriching experience, we are going to talk about uh, the topic for today, which is interpretation of VDRL blood report. So before moving on to today's session, let us have a brief look on what the topic says. In this live session, where we unravel the complexities of interpreting VDRL results during pregnancy and we'll be discussing the crucial steps in effective management. In this session, we aim to provide valuable insights into ensuring the well-being of both mother and their unborn children. So now without any further delay, I would like to welcome Sir at our forum and would like to hand over the session to him for his precious talk to begin. So over to you. Uh, thank you, Batul, and let me thank IJCP also for providing me yet another opportunity to speak with you all. The topic I have taken today is the interpretation of VDR. VDR. Being in the postgraduate and undergraduate teaching for more than 40 years in the field of venereology and also HIV, uh, I sincerely feel that I can, or I'm confident that I can present you the entire things without using any slides. If I use slides, your concentration will be on the slides and not on the words or topic which I am speaking. Uh, dear medical brethren, in the 2020s, we had one epidemic which turned into a pandemic. COVID-19. And within two or three years, we are able to conquer that COVID pandemic because we developed the vaccines, even though we didn't have effective drugs with the vaccine and <clears throat> maintaining the general condition of the people who had this COVID-19 and with the help of uh, ventilators and uh, oxygen and other things, we were able to bring most of the critical patients out. In the later part of the 20th century, also we had one pandemic, that is the HIV. Even though, uh, the first case was reported in 1981 in states and gradually in all the countries and in India, it was in 1986, the first case of HIV was reported. Even though we didn't have or develop vaccine, we found out drugs which can manage, just like hypertension and diabetes. We do not have drugs to cure, but we were able to bring out drugs with which we can control the HIV tra transmission and progression of the, the various uh, complications in the HIV positive people. And in the early night, 19th century, we had flu pandemic where we lost sizable number of people all over the world. And now there is a re-emergence of flu, even though not that much severe enough. You may wonder, we had a pandemic or epidemic of syphilis. If I say this, many people will wonder, ah, was syphilis an epidemic or pandemic? Yes, in the early 16th century, we had uh, syphilis endemic in Europe. Gradually, it spread to other things like uh, Africa, Asia, even states. And the, this became a pandemic. This coincided with the discovery of New World, America by Columbus. So we have a Colombian theory where 70 and odd life prisoners who were forced to accompany Columbus to find out a new way of reaching India, they landed in 
uh, West Indies or stay new land, and they found these people were red instead of things. So they could, these people called them as Red Indians. And these life prisoners had sex with Red Indian women. And when they came back uh, with the discovery of, uh, of finding out a new land, and also they brought not only tobacco, and they brought this syphilis also. And these people were let free because they accompanied Columbus with the assurance that they'd be freed after the this voyage. And these people joined the army. And because of the frequent war there, they, after conquering each country, they had sex with the conquered country women. And the French people called it as Italian disease, and Italian people called it as French disease because they developed single painless inhalator ulcer uh, within 9 to 90 days of having sex with women. So this is the Colombian theory of subjects. We have another theory also, African theory, where we still have certain pockets of Africa, endemic syphilis, which is caused by same organism, Trichonema pallida. And this spreads like a contagious disease like scabies. They may will have ulcers over the hip. The mother uh, having the child in the uh, hip may transmit the infection to the ch child and also the, from the child to the father like that. So the, we call it as non-sexual mode of transmission called endemic syphilis. And these, Africa was conquered by British people and other European countries and these people uh, didn't have any wealth to take from Africa to uh, UK and Europe. So they took the, these people as uh, slaves and made them to work in their factories and the houses. And British people or uh, Europeans used to uh, dress themselves from head to foot, cap on the head, socks and shoes on the foot, and coat over coat like that. So the Though the slaves had endemic syphilis, they did not spread to the British or the European people. And only time they these Europeans and, and British people undress is during sex. So what and what was a, a non-sexual mode of spread in Africa became a sexual mode of spread in UK and U Europe. So this is called as African theory. So uh, at that time, we didn't have effective drugs. For about three centuries, we didn't have effective drugs. And we met with so many complications of syphilis. Uh, and right from head to foot, the late manifestation used to occur. And the Stokes, the physician then there, uh, described that syphilis is an infectious disease, systemic from the onset capable of involving each and every structure in the body, can mimic many diseases in the field of surgery, capable of spreading from mother to fetus, and capable <clears throat> affecting all parts and, <clears throat> and treatable to the point of presumptive cure. At that time, there was no blood transfusion. Land strainer had not there, and blood groups were not identified. Blood transfusion was not there. Had blood transfusion been there at that time, the Stokes would have included blood transfusion also as one of the mode of spread of syphilis. So this syphilis, uh, when I did the undergraduate and diploma, we used to have cardiovascular syphilis, neurosyphilis in the medical ward, gamma in the surgical ward, congenital syphilis in the obstetrics ward. So we had clinical cases of syphilis uh, when we were undergraduates and early postgraduates. Now, with the advent of discovery of penicillin by Alexander Fleming and his usage for treating syphilis by Mahoney, syphilis in the early stages were, became completely curable. With single injection of benzathine penicillin 24 lakhs, Within two years of infection, we can cure 100% of syphilis. When it becomes 
more than two years, it becomes late syphilis and it is treatable only to the point of presumptive cure with weekly injections of rinseth infant filling, 24 lakhs into four, four weekly for four weeks. So we were able to treat syphilis cases, but we were not able to come out with vaccines. So still clinical cases of syphilis exist in the community in all the continents. Syphilis and William Osler, a famous physician said, he who knows syphilis knows medicine. So it comes in the differential diagnosis of most of the diseases prevailing in up to 1950. And VDRL was an important investigation. Yes, before VDRL, we had Wasserman uh, test, which was used for diagnosing syphilis. This was cumbersome and costly. So the VDRL came. VDRL is not for all the venereal diseases. This test is developed by the Venereal Disease Research Laboratory in states. So this is called as VDRL test. This is a very sensitive test, but it is not a specific test. We say a test as sensitive if it is able to make out uh, syphilis in the pres uh, presence of the syphilis, VDRL should be always reported as positive. When we say specific, it should be absent or non-reactive in the absence of the disease. Mm, then, then we can call it as a specific uh, test, we, whereas VDRL is not a specific test. We come out, come and experience the VDRL positive in many of the conditions. So this is called as false positive test. So in the absence of syphilis, VDR can be reported as positive in infectious diseases like malaria, certain viral diseases, and chronic illness like tuberculosis, leprosy, and inflammatory conditions like systemic lupus, erythematosis, or rheumatoid arthritis, VDRL can be reported as reactive or positive. So we have to enter into today's topic with the thing that <coughs> VDRL is only as a very sensitive test, simple test, and we have RPR, rapid plasma reagent test, a card test which can be done very easily and find out whether it is positive or negative. Once positive, my take home message today is don't jump into conclusion and put the diagnosis as syphilis. Because you have to keep in mind false positive reaction. Then how to rule out these false positive reactions? We, are, we have not only qualitative tests, but also quantitative tests. We can do it in dilution. Undiluted, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 120, 64, 128, 256, like that. Then we can go on diluting this and do this. And false positive will not be reactive beyond eight dilutions. They may be reactive as one, two, four, or at the most eight. If it is reactive in 16 dilution, we can rule out false positive. Why? <clears throat> See, we have one condition called secondary syphilis, where people have bilateral, symmetrical, papular, macular, papular squamous lesions all over the body, which are non-itchy. When we do this VDRL test, it may come as non-reactive. This is because in undiluted, the antibodies are more than the antigen, and hence it will be non-reactive. When we do it in dilutions in 16, 32, 64, like that, the VDRL will become positive or reactive. So this is called prozone phenomena. So we have to rule out um, a prozone phenomena, especially dealing with skin lesions and condylometal data, which is the most infectious lesions in syphilis. And we have specific tests. 
Initially, we had trypanoma pyelidum immobilization test. We used to have uh, trypanoma pyelidum maintained in the rabbits by injecting into the testes. The rabbit will have uh, syphilitic archaitis, and after a, <clears throat> three months or six months, we will kill the rabbit, take, crush out the, these testes, and put the sample in another fresh two rabbits and use the trypanoma pyelidum acquired here for testing this trypanoma pyelidum immobilization test. When we add patient serum to the uh, motile trypanoma pyelidum uh, specimen, this trypanoma pyelidum will get paralyzed and it will not move. So this is called trypanoma pyelidum immobilization test due to the antibodies in the syphilitic patient. But maintaining rabbit and other things not only cumbersome, but also dangerous. Some of the uh, scientists like Dr. Charco has developed uh, shanker over the finger by, when handling this rabbit and infected testes. So when fluorescent microscope came, these killed trypanoma pyridum were used in the fluorescent trypanomal antibody absorption test, FTA, ABS test. When flocculation test, uh, test, test came, then we had trypanoma pyridum heme agglutination test, flocculation or agglutination, where we have beads uh, coated with trypanoma pyridum antigen. When we add the serum, these uh, particles will agglutinate. So we have a very simple test called TPHA. So TPHA is a specific test and PDRL is a non-specific test. With this, we'll go, go further. Where we do this VDRL test? In all blood donors, VDRL test is a mandatory. The donor should not have syphilis and should not give the infection to the person who poor pay, innocent patient who is receiving this blood sample. So blood VDRL must is a mandatory test in all blood samples where the blood is donated. Now other tests like hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV are also included as mandatory test in all blood donors sample. Then we have certain master health checkup. When the pay, uh, persons come for master health checkup, we include BDRL also. By this, we were able to pick up asymptomatic syphilitic patients. And the next one is to prevent congenital syphilis. So when any antenatal woman coming for the first time to uh, the, any health facility, private or public, especially in the first time, sir, we always, we confirm the pregnancy and next to do chemoglobin and this VDR. Because if you diagnose VDR in the first time, sir, and treat with penicillin, we can cure both mother and fetus because this will not cross the placental barrier during the first trimester. The Langerhans cells in the placenta disintegrates only in the second trimester and then only the trypanoma pyelidum from other circulation goes into the fetal circulation. So always we do the VDRL in the first trimester and uh, <coughs> And if it is positive, we give the injection to the mother, not to the feeder. So we, we were able to do that. Even when they are diagnosed in the late things, we give this penicillin and give the benefit and follow up the newborn for things. And newborn may have maternal antibodies. So we always wait uh, for six weeks and repeat so that uh, the uh, syphilis in the newborn can be diagnosed. Now we have, um, uh, after the ELISA and other things, we have uh, e, uh, e, M and G antigen. So we can find out whether it is passive transfer or actively produced also. So in all pregnant women, we always do radiar. And the other one is of my field, my field of sexually transmitted disease. A patient may come for gonorrhea, not for syphilis. After Diagnosing gonorrhea and treating the patient, we always take the blood sample for VDRL 
because we VDRL uh, can be there because of the risky behavior and exposure things they can acquire more than one venereal disease and they can be syphilis. So always we do the VDR. And also nowadays we do HIV test also. In <clears throat> STD patients, HIV will be 10 times more positive than the normal population because of this risky behavior. So in all, and if they have cases of clinical cases of syphilis, you should know the natural history of syphilis. After 9 to 90 days after the inoculation of Tripinema pallidum into the human body, the single painless inverted ulcer will occur at the point of inoculation. Usually it is the genitalia where the chancre develops. And the regional lymph nodes will be enlarged, uh, painless and India rubbery inconsistent. Our erasing rubber is called India rubber. So just they will yield, but not change the shape of the uh, lymph nodes. So this is called primary uh, lesion or shank, primary thing. It can also occur in the tongue, uh, fingers, and also in the anus in the homosexual people. Even without treatment or with, with, with uh, sorry, without improper treatment or no treatment, this ulcer will heal and patient will go into asymptomatic or latent state. Latent mean hidden. After three to six months, patient will, will develop uh, skin lesions, especially uh, uh, bilateral, symmetrical, non-itchy, macular, papular, papular squamous lesions can occur. And the moist microcutaneous junctions, condyloma later can occur. They will also have pains in the bones and joints. And the optic nerve also can be affected and the vision may be impaired. And this also, even without treatment, it will disappear. And they will go into asymptomatic or latent state. After five to 10 years, they will develop neurosyphilis. That is, if this um, parenchyma is involved in the skull, they will develop GPA, general paresis of insane. If may, may, uh, meningeal membranes are in, involved, they will develop uh, one or more cranial nerve palsy. If it goes into the spinal circulation and uh, spinal cord is in, uh, matter is involved, they will develop diabetes tarsalis, where they will develop areflexia, uh, ataxia, like that. And if it involves the meningo vascular, they will develop uh, quadriplegia, paraplegia, and syringomyelia-like lesions, they will occur. And if it occurs, uh, one more condition called gamma, where, where the testes will, uh, will become like billiard ball, very uh, solid and more weight. If it occurs over the skin, they will develop punched out ulcers. Tubercular ulcers will be undermined in this, and cancerous lesions will be averted margin, whereas gamma will be lampant out. So this is the natural history, and mostly they will die of aneurysm of iota, cardiovascular complication, aneurysm iota, aortic incompetence like that. So it is most necessary to do this simple test called VDRL uh, screening test. Uh, especially now we'll take out only the antenatal cases. We do the VDRL in the first time step. And if it is reactive, that too, especially if the dilution is less than four or below, we have to rule out uh, biological false positive. Even pregnancy itself can produce biological false positive. So we here we, you, we do the TPHA. TPHA test is then. And if it is positive, we give this benzathine penicillin. Uh, uh, after test dose, uh, we always give penicillin after test dose. In our Institute of Venerology in GH Madras, attached to Madras Medical College, we never had a death due to anaphylaxis due to uh, penicillin. We have used PAM, uh, penicillin aluminum monosterate, and protein penicillin, PP, then benzathine penicillin. He never had a death. Only thing is you have to give a 
test dose and then give the full dose equally in the both luteal region. Then pain shock will be there, not be there. And even if during a skin test, if they are allergic, if we immediately give adrenaline, deg and degadon, uh, steroids, and other things. And very easy to bring up the patient from anaphylaxis because we are giving only 5,000 to 10,000 units of penicillin as a test tool. So this is a very simple treatment. And if it is a more than four years, uh, two years, we give weekly once for four weeks. So once we give T TPHA positive, let it be mass health patient or a blood donor or a patient, syphilitic patient, we give uh, benzene penicillin 100%. There is no resistance to penicillin so far. Never in the history of microbiology, we have a penicillin resistant trypanoma palate. That is the beauty mm, uh, of the, our field. And, and the VDRL, after treatment, it may take three months to six months uh, for the become non-reactive. See, initially, if it is reactive, eight dilution. After one or two months, reactive, four dilution. And reactive, two, like that. And within a year, it will become non-reactive. If the dilutions keep on increasing from four, it is becoming eight, it is becoming 16. Then we say the disease is active and it is progressing. And what penicillin which we had given is not working. So uh, even for this, the, the TPHA, even after treatment, it will never become negative or non-reactive. Because TPHA is like a scar. We have, I have a scar, even, even though it has healed, scar will not disappear. So TPHA will remain as a scar in the blood and it will be positive. So those people who are going for Gulf for job, it is the TPHA which is then not the VERR because they may, might have developed syphilis had treatment and would have become non-reactive. But if they have TPHA positive, it is even though they we, we know fully well they are not having the disease, but these people are prone to indulge in premarital or extramarital contact without any inhibition. So they the government does not want this type of people with this lifestyle of having premarital or extramarital contact. So they do not welcome people with TPHA positive. So, dear friends, I have, in a nutshell, I had given. So, VDRL is mandatory in all blood samples. Now we do not have paid donors. We have only voluntary donors. And the, the counselor, soon after entering into the blood bank, takes the counseling, oh, and no, no, wants to know about the lifestyle and also about premarital or extramarital, whether they had previous venereal disease uh, or jaundice uh, or other symptoms of HIV. So this patient will not be allowed or encouraged to give the uh, blood donation. And master health checkup also, the, uh, the physician, uh, one of the report, these people go to the doctor and the doctor seeing the result, he himself may treat or medical with the dermatopediologist and have the treatment done. And all pregnant women, it is very, very easy to diagnose in the first time cell and treat and preventing the congenital syphilis child. Even the child is born with congenital syphilis, we can treat in the initial stage, early congenital stage with benzene uh, penicillin and cure the child of this. So we literally, we do not have a child with Hutchison's sleep, eighth now deafness. These are all manifestations of uh, late congenital syphilis. If you had come across any child with Hutchison's or uh, age now deafness or in interstitial characteristics losing the uh, vision. So it is a, uh, and Clutton's joint, swollen joints. So 
congenital syphilis is described as the disease of the blind, deaf, and heart. So we do not have those children now. And thanks to media, simple test called VDRL and effective treatment with benzithin benzene. So with the world I say easy, uh, approaching as fastly within three or four days. Uh, let us get sensitized with the syphilis at least, uh, which has been there from uh, 16th century. More than six centuries we are having this. And uh, even though we have effective treatment, uh, we are not able to fully eradicate like uh, polio and other smallpox like that. Smallpox, hmm? even though the, it was a deadly disease, it was called only smallpox. Syphilis or the secondary lesions of syphilis is called great pox or big pox. So we should, we should not have a single case of great pox or big pox in our community. And with the effective treatment, uh, diagnosis with VDR and interpreting in the best possible way, and treating, giving the full dose, we can uh, not only control, we can gradually eliminate syphilis from our world. Thank you. If you have any doubts, I am most willing to answer your uh, doubts. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the enriching talk that you have uh, shared today with our viewers. Uh, we have received a few questions from the participants. With all your due permission, I would like to put across those questions to you. The yeah. first question is, uh, if you can kindly discuss the significance of VDRL testing in the context of prenatal care and the management of syphilis in pregnant individuals. Yeah. See... Pregnant women, I told you, next to confirming the diagnosis of pregnancy. Now we have the card test. Patient can get it from the medical shop and do the card test and find out whether she is pregnant or not. Once pregnant, she should always go to the doctor. We all uh, married women should be educated this way. Even in teenage itself, mm, uh, when these people go for party and other things, most of the women, they are fear of pregnancy only before marriage. They, they do not bother much about syphilis or other sexually transmitted diseases. They seldom use condom for the male partner or female condom is also there. They are not using it. Those pre, uh, teenage people who attend parties and mingle freely without any vision. It is, I am not accusing any, all adolescent girls, but they should be taught by mother and other things uh, about the danger of not only pregnancy, but also this sexually transmitted infection. Once the antenatal, when they go, in, now in India, about 55 to 60% of the women go to government hospitals. We, even in the villages, they go to sub-centers, primary health centers, tolic headquarters, hospital, district. Only 30 to 40% they go to private doctors. So most of the private doc, uh, obstetrician and gynecologists are now metamorphing or changing themselves as infertility specialists. And only less than 5% of the delivery is done in the house of the patient, that too, by trained uh, elderly women in the thing. Even tribal people, most of the time, they come to the nearest government hospital, sub-center or primary health center to have the delivery. So, in this RPR and VDRL are always available, in, even in the sub-centers and primary health centers. So, they do this test, simple test. And if it is possible, sometimes they refer to tolic headquarters and have the treatment. Penicillin is not that much available in many of the hospitals, but where the cases are there, it can be procured and given to the things. If they are allergic to penicillin, we use doxycycline. Uh, uh, 
one baby for two to three weeks will give, and they can have almost 99.9 percent .9 cure is there. So VDRL is a simple test which is done in all government hospitals, even in private primary health centers. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for answering in so much of details. Uh, I hope our viewer have understood the explanation they shared by you for the question. Uh, moving to the next question that we have received is from another viewer and uh, sir wants to know if you can elaborate on the implications of a positive VDRL result considering both infectious and non-infectious causes. Yeah. If it is if it is if they have an ulcer Definitely, they are infectious. Primary chancre is infectious. If they have secondary lesions like condyloma later, they are in, definitely infectious. But if they move to late, like cardiovascular or neurosyphilis, they are not infectious. That is why I told you two years is called early latent, less than two years, and more than two years uh, late later. This early latent uh, semen and cervical fluid, you will have trypanoma pallidum because trypanoma pallidum is circulating in the blood and comes out to the discharge and they are infectious up to two years. After two years, sex is not a problem anymore because this trypanoma pallidum goes into the lymph nodes and deeper organs and gets lodged and they are not seldom seen in the thing. But a pregnant mother, mother becoming pregnant even after three years or four years after getting the uh, syphilis is infectious to the fetus because the fetus maternal circulation keeps on circulating into the fetus. And, and I told you after the initial three months, the lung and layer protects. And after that, the entire maternal blood goes into the fetal and even if you trypanoma pallidum or that, it will get multiplied in the fetus and the child will be affected. And syphilis is called a baby killer. Gonorrhea is called a baby preventer because it will in, not, uh, cause inflammation of both fallopian tubes and cause obstruction. Or the, the vast deference is there in male and it will cause hydrolytal funiculitis and cause block. So gonorrhea is called a uh, killer, baby killer. Uh, sorry, baby preventer. Syphilis, it will cause abortion up, uh, in the second time step, and it will cause stillbirth in the third time step. It will cause premature delivery before these things, and cause a, a, a child may be apparently normal soon after birth. And after three weeks or four weeks, it will develop signs and symptoms of early congenital syphilis. Mm -hmm. This is called profitas law. And the so the so the child will be affected uh, with the con uh, abortion, stillbirth, premature delivery, congenital syphilis, and progressing to late congenital kids. So uh, these are the uh, effects of trypanoma pallida, which can be diagnosed out by simple test, simple screening test or PDR. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for answering that question in such an elaborative manner. Moving to the next question and the last question for today's uh, session. And the question is from one of our viewers who wants to know the recommendation of follow-up schedule for patients undergoing syphilis treatment based on VDRL results. Yeah. So once the VDRL is a consultative thing, we have to do the qualitative test and find out what the highest dilution this VDRL is for. Simple quantitative test is not sufficient. The doctors have to mention VDRL, both quantitative and qualitative. Then only the lab will do. Otherwise, the lab will stop short with quantitative, uh, qualitative test and report. So once you have system exposure is there, unprotected sex is there, 
Uh, well then we can presume on, uh, and if the lesions are there, we can presume it is a uh, syphilis and give the treatment. If there is no history or no signs and symptoms of syphilis in the patient, then we have to rule out false positive by doing TPHA test. If it comes as TPHA positive, we then take the history, then they will accept. Uh, they will, uh, yes, sir, I had uh, so many years back, I had like the exposure uh, like that. In women, it is very difficult to make out the primary chancre. It is genitally as concealed and they may not see. Whereas males, while passing urine, they will easily make out this shank. So once we do the TPHA, and if the history is less than two years of exposure, uh, then we have to give this uh, thing, uh, 24 lakhs of benzathine penicillin after test dose, uh, divided into two doses in both gluteal region. And we have to skip, certainly screen the uh, partner. Partner for first for VDRL and if it is reactive, TPHA and give the treatment. Many times <laughs> we do not give the partner treatment. In gonorrhea and chlamydia, we, we give. We don't want these are acute infections. They can cause affect the uh, genital uh, and adnexal organ causing PID. So we give this uh, epidemic treatment called epidose. Whereas in syphilis, we screen the partner and uh, give the treatment if it is uh, positive. And especially if the uh, wife is pregnant, then suddenly we'll be doing the test. After giving the treatment, we should always tell the patient may have mild fever. Mild fever may be there. We need not treat the fever if it is there. So, uh, because we have to explain them, fever is helpful. Helpful in the sense, when the fever is there, we, they will have hyperdynamic circulation. So the penicillin in the blood will reach the nook and corner of the syphilitic patient. Even if you triplenema pyridum, they, uh, they are there in the brain, uh, myocardium or uh, iota like that, they will get one kill those things. So initially, those days, we had fever therapy. Uh, we, we didn't have effective penicillin. We were having only penicillin, aluminum, monosterate. So what we used to do is put them in a mosquito net, allow anaphylis mosquito inside, cause malaria in those patients. This fever will uh, and give the injection so that they will have effective. But this is not a justifiable treatment now. Mm, and we can be uh, easily found fault uh, things. So we have given up. And after that, we had smallpox vaccination, which was given as a, or BCG, given as IV, which will cause fever. And when, when we give penicillin, it will reach the nook and corner and kill the treatment of So fever therapy is, even though it was there, we don't encourage those good methods. But if they have this fever, we should tell them it is due to the trypanoma pyridum getting killed and the, and the toxins are being released. This is called JH reaction. There is Hesheimer reaction, which ensures the effectiveness of the penicillin and killing of the trypanoma pyridum. So we, within one or two days, the fever will set, settle down and they will get cured. The ulcer will get killed. The secondary lesions will disappear, mm, but not uh, uh, cardiovascular or neural lesions. Once the lesions are there, it will be there. Mm, uh, so after one month, we ask them to come. We find out whether they have any other sexually transmitted disease. And we ask them to come after three months, repeat the VDR. The VDR will become less in dilutions. Uh, and after screen, after six months, after one year. Within this period, <coughs> the syphilis would have completely cleared and VDR slowly comes to normal. And the team, I told you TPHA 
will not, uh, will never become negative. It will like a scar. So second, there is no infection immunity in syphilis. Once they have the ulcer, it doesn't mean that they will they are immune to further uh, trypanoma pallidum onslaught. They will get the shanker again and again, and they will progress to secondary syphilis. Under. There is no infection immunity. That is why we were not able to bring out with uh, this one, vaccine for syphilis. There is no immunity, chemo immunity or immunological things in syphilis. So we, we keep them and other things and we counsel them not to indulge in uh, unprotected sex and not to go and uh, donate blood. Uh, things are there. So we uh, encourage you know, them to abstain from blood donation at least for a bit. And, and even if, because FTA, ABS, and uh, TPHA will be positive, they better they don't, do not donate blood. So this is how we do the follow-up. And many times they will not go in. If you treat within two years, they will not go into this one. If you feel they may develop uh, neurosyphilis, then we have to do LP. We were doing as well. Uh, postgraduates and uh, assistant, we were doing uh, this LP uh, and collect the CSF fluid. And with this CSF fluid, we will do VDR. This VDR and CSF is a specific test. It is not a screening test. Once if it is ready, VDR or CSF thing is positive, it 100% it shows that is it is a neuro case of neurosyphilis. Then the the proteins will be increased more than 20 to 40 milligram, and lymphocytes will be seen more than more than five per hyper fish. So uh, uh, lymph, uh, <clears throat> the lymphocytes increase, protein increase, protein say, increase in CSF and VDR positive denotes oh, thing. It is a neurosyphilis. It is a red flag sign. Even if they don't have GPA tables or other things. We start giving this one. We do not use benzethine penicillin for neuro cases because benzethine penicillin will not cross blood brain barrier. So we use protein penicillin, protein penicillin uh, daily into 20 days weekly. And to prevent JH reaction, especially in the uh, iotitis, iotic incompetence, aneurysm. JS reaction may constrict the uh, thing and cause heart attack or myocardial infarction. To prevent this day, late onset JH reactions, we give steroids initially for three or four days to prevent the JH reaction and then give the penicillin so that we do not have the adverse reaction of JH causing death and other complications. Nowadays, neuro and cardiovascular syphilis are becoming less and less because they are in the, it is not that they come have radial test and take the treatment. They take the antibiotics like uh, doxycycline, azithromycin. Initially, in all pediatric cases, we were using broken penicillin or uh, uh, for all cases of pneumonia and other things. So these ch children and the adults who received the antibiotics got the trypanoma pallidum, even if it, it was there, it got killed and they become free of the infection. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for such an elaborative session and uh, such wonderful answers to the questions that were asked by our viewers. Thank you so much for that. Uh, we would uh, like to thank all the viewers for their ardent participation and for the questions asked by them. And at the outset, I would also like to thank you, sir, for taking out your valuable time and for being here at our platform and sharing your enriching experience and your knowledge with all our viewers who are here present with us. Yeah, so as, with a all your... yeah, as a tail piece, since December 1st, we have the uh, <coughs> World AIDS Day. We have not developed a vaccine for, for just like COVID. So knowledge is the vaccine. We, we have to spread the knowledge about uh, HIV, syphilis, and other sexually transmitted disease 
that vaccines are not there. Only the, the uh, dissemination of knowledge to all the people, especially the teenage people, the uh, any people going for job uh, other than their home, staying away from the home, and people who have extra money and they want to have uh, enjoy themselves, we have to spread the message of uh, these infections, which are, do not have vaccines, but it can they can get the infection by unprotected sex and other things. So thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Uh, with this, we would like to conclude the session here for today. And we'll hope to see everyone soon with another next talk with sir and with another beautiful topic that sir would be discussing on. So thank you so much. Till that time, we are concluding the session here for today. Thank you. Thanks.